need to get out of the, we need to get out of the silly goofy <laughs> mood. Uh, cu oh, cu first pick, Jax. Okay, I like this. So Sejuani alongside it, perhaps, to make sure it doesn't get snatched up. You want a strong top side, and then you look to secure Nikon 3. I don't mind this, if that's what W you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. It does mean that you could... Oh, no, Renekton's banned away, so that's obviously what the idea is, I imagine. Uh, we'll see what WE have cooking up, though, because if you do go down this route of going towards Sejuani now, then Nikon 3, you do leave your bottom lane potentially exposed, or jungle in general, okay? It's going to be the Maokai nah, ahead like of this. the Sejuani. Uh, objective yeah. control, vision control as well. Very easy to achieve with this champion. If you start to pull ahead, it gets obnoxious. But EDG uh, themselves can still find a counter matchup, I'm sure, on the top side uh, through Arla yeah. and his extensive champion pool, especially in the duelist, right? Arla has True. Uh, things like a Fiora, has uh, other uh, tanks that he can lean on if he wants to neutralize this jack so it's not going to be impossible for him to do edg go towards the Kha'Zix hey, hey let's go okay so a lot of spacing a lot of control so far from we also a bit of a side lane answer there with that jacks but right now it's edg looking for kills and looking for snowball and i actually appreciate that in game one they are looking to hands check so far at least with the first two picks and we'll see what they can get with this rounding out of the first phase for them because i do expect them to continue to try to grab a lot of priority in the top side of the map yeah okay so cannon to round out will be able to neutralize the jacks inside of lane fairly easily there's the jace so no nico in this game despite it being up and available uh but jace maokai of course a very very powerful duo um we saw it at the very start of the year i'm sure we're all very familiar but objective control paired up them with jace's ability to basically chunk out very squishy members for upwards of 600 damage with those accelerated shock blasts can be a very very disgusting combo to deal with so now uh, if we start to pull ahead in the early game in particular things can start to get out of control for edg so they need to try and secure as neutral and as strong a lane matchup as they can i feel like and try and keep that afloat as edg the only issue for me mazel is when you go towards something like the Kha'Zix, he's not going to really be the strongest and the best at kind of supplementing some of these early lanes. In yeah. fact, it's often the opposite way around. He wants strong lanes to supplement him until he gets to that level 6 mark, and then he can actually start to kind of fight for himself. For now, though, away from that, we're at the ban phase number 2, and Alistar for WE has been removed away mm. as Mako was showing a lot of priority on that, and Varus on the other end alongside the Braum, so there isn't as much disengage available for EDG as well. And right now, looking over at Shanks, it's all about trying to keep Fofo as much as possible in that mid lane, not let him get that connection with Jie, Jie and keep the pressure up, right? And that's where Hung might be on a little bit more reactive pathing earlier on, but some good preemptive pathing could also help you try to stop this snowball that EDG are fully opting into at this point. I do wonder if they are going to try to whittle down this champion pool bot lane a little bit more. They do take away the Aphelio, so they have been willing to try to try dwindle down these carry picks towards hope yeah, they definitely have been but i feel like this is probably a kaiser angle if i had to wager a guess here from hope uh obviously being able to go ap slash that kind of hybrid build actually enables a more poke variant of kaiser right and when you've got jace alongside maokai that feels like it would fit in perfectly but they're gonna blind the rail i mean they did go for two support bands right so i kind of understand this idea of removing away two strong lane counters to this but i feel like support matchup has way more sway in terms of what you can actually get done in the early stages so holding that to five i feel like could have been higher value but this is the option for we and we'll see how it pays off as edg now have the opportunity to pick up their priority ad carry and the counter pick support into this realm i'm sorry i know you're trying to be serious but by god that little gif of uzi in the background there yeah, I know. <laughs> giving kisses out was adorable uh we do get the kaisa locked in for uzi so an opt in and something we've seen talked a lot about in the lpl the win rate does not look good but the consistency we see this pick and the amount of times we've actually seen it snowball with the different variations of builds has been really really interesting to keep track of yeah it really has been uh, you know the addition of shiv and just generally the item uh, changes overall have been very very fun uh, to track with some of the ad carries who are kind of outliers uh, to a lot of these uh, more fun builds as it was hovering over a couple <laughs> of very smile. fun champs and you, know, you mentioned the smile certainly there uh, curious to know if it's just going to be the jinx it will be as this is one of hope's most played champions and i think coming out of that four win streak we uh, had hope on something ridiculous like 38% of his team's damage or something. And a lot yeah. of it was because of this Jinx pick. So we'll see what he can get done here in this game number one into EDG. Talking about momentum. Well, Jinx is a, the queen of that. And really want to see if WE can pilot this. I love that they have an answer 
into a side lane pressure. It's a little bit different though than the LeBlanc, but the Jax will definitely be huge for Cube. I'm looking all eyes on Hung to try to navigate this early game here, not let EDG be the, the, the bulwark that WE can get through this early game with. Yeah, he has to be for me. Uh, I feel like though, they're not really going to be pressured to be honest with you. Like to, to me, EDG, I feel like unless the matchup in the mid lane gets out of hand, which it, it shouldn't, then they should be all right cruising towards those, uh, you know, first couple of sets of items. And again, lane priority is going to be huge. And I feel like WE, despite what should have been, in my mind, the losing matchup, if you blind the support, end up with a pretty okay matchup where they should end up with lane priority. And I need to see WE utilize that. Otherwise, EDG could end up cruising to a very, very easy first set of evolutions here for JJ on the Kha'Zix. And that's when things can get a little bit slippery yeah. when Fogs of Vision starts to pop up on the map. Well, we're getting to the nitty gritty of the season for both these two teams. W have a lot of games to play, but EDG, they have a solid path towards playoffs. All eyes are on Uzi versus Hope at the bottom lane as we hit to Xi'an and to Summoner's Rift at the whole arena of WE. Game one kicks off now. And listen to those Jios. Chills. Genuinely, Mako. Oh, Mako. Oh, a little bit of that lollipop not going his way. We'll have to burn the early flash. WE early on with this level one. Yeah, I think not only trying to get past Iwandi, but uh, the slow kind of almost helped him out, but he just can't risk getting stunned up uh, by the rail. So no flash down there. Hung could make a very, very early appearance towards the bottom side of the map and really make things quite awkward. As this is really split. coming down here to contest this. Wow. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I don't know who wins. There's Mako has no vision. flash. So if he faced you, oh, it's JJ. Bye bye. Oh my God. Wait, and he's right there, but they actually <laughs> missed the engage. What is going on? JJ will burn the flash. It is all chaos all early. Everyone's trying to get warmed up here as I want will mount his steed one more time. We'll see this Rift Herald uh, maybe be of importance later on. I don't know, especially uh, uh, with this early action, if we're going to get any oh more God. because it feels like EDG are going to be on the back foot for a while now. Yeah, okay. So they didn't kill JJ, but they got his flash and they still forced him out of his bottom side of the jungle. And with Mako not having uh, flash in his own right, this could actually make the uh, potential of a level three very, very plausible. So. Uzi and Mako can't really afford to push this lane up too high. Uh, it would actually probably pay off better yields to keep it in a slightly more neutral state on their end. We'll see exactly what they want to do with the wave, though. If they can actually hard shove it and crash on wave two, they can certainly sit a little safer. But uh, you can see Hung on the minimap is behind them already on the Krugs. Looking for actually a oh, fight 2v2. That's a big combo as well as that Prey Seeker following through. The Ignite's not going to be enough, but they get the lockdown on a Hope. One more auto. It's not enough going to go through Uzi taking a zap to the back of the head, but it's a tight tussle in the 2v2. Hung's this hit. is exactly what we were expecting. Hung Hung's with hit. that red side clear of EDG's jungle finds the flash away from the dredge line and Uzi. That's first blood going straight to Hung and straight to WE. I just don't know what EDG are thinking. Like, I, my, my only thoughts here are that they're trying to win out the 2v2 so hard that the skank doesn't really look feasible for Hung, but the fact of the matter is Uzi, as he looks to try and run down Hope, takes a tower shot, a zap in the back of the head as he's leaving, and it's like 250 less HP to work with on the potential turnaround, and with Hung flashing over the dredge line, it just makes things a little bit too impossible. Mako's going to do his best to hold what of the wave he can, and to be fair, he's going to hold about five creeps, so it's not bad. But still, giving over this first blood nice feels a little bit lackadaisical. JJ will at the very least clear away some of these camps on the top side because he knows it's kind of a split map situation. But for WE, this is still kind of the desired result, right? Sure, I want the and hope perhaps losing the summoner spells and the health advantages that they do. Not great, but they pick up first blood on Uzi on the bottom side. Sure, it goes into Hung, but they know the top side of the map is at no threat of being dove because it's that Kha'Zix. Hung comes down here eventually. Great flash over the dredge line here. I that was insane. Okay, we won't talk about that. That's, That's fine. actually insane. That's but right. also, I'm surprised that EGG were so far up. Something we talked about in this was experience, right? And this is the mm. most experienced bottom lane we have in the LPL. I was By surprised that with all the pressure from WM on bottom side, they didn't expect anything from Hung. And we're playing so far up. Now, Cube is in some trouble on top side, but that's still an interesting point. Yeah, I, that does still make me 
Wonder. JJ, he's got Counter Strike, lad. So he's just going to walk out. Q does go through it, though. So uh, still has to be a little strike, bit respectful. Right? Yeah, exactly. Now, Arlo will pick up a plate. And that feels pretty good for the early laning phase. Might be able to get himself a Hextech all on air, and that does make those short burst trades very, very uh, strong. There is Aerie on Arla. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, he's not going shit. But maybe he does. We'll have to see. There's a uh, Fofo. Oh, we're now on this trade here. On to Shanks. We haven't really looked over the mid lane too much, but it seems like they're almost even. Fofo's just pulling ahead a little bit, but can be expected on occasion uh, if you are pressured out super early as cube this is a bad trade because Arla's leaving the lane <laughs> unless he all oh, in he kills. just wants to all in there but does get the flash back in return cube getting a little bit low okay it's a very very sticky situation up there in the top side as shanks it's the chain connected does get the back stopped as well yeah so solo lane's looking pretty pretty strange for the side of we <laughs> i will say uh, Shanks definitely looking for a window to reset. I don't think Fofo ever really kills of our Ignite here. It does definitely feel like you'll have to be a very, Nico? very big overstep from Yeah, Shanks. Uzi has stopped that back. Nico yeah. in a little bit of trouble there. Maybe able to walk it out though, so not the end of the world, but this wave stay is not particularly a pleasant one, and Hung is on the bottom side of the map. He's actually beelining down here. But what does he want? He's been spotted out by that control ward. I don't think he's, he's going to look for the aggression. The, uh, wrap on. around dragon. Yeah, I guess so. He's pulled it out of the pit, but EDG will surely know that's going on if they just look over the pit. They would have seen him there not too long ago. This dragon will get they picked can't up. can't do anything. Yeah, they cannot do anything at all. So, good bit of early pressure, I will say. Because of where it is, if they drag the dragon any further, it could reset, but it should just be secured. JJ is going to look for a couple <laughs> more cross map uh, camps. And only level five for now, but we are six minutes in, so he's actually on pretty decent pace, all things considered, especially con yeah. <laughs> when you factor in, of course, that early invade. Hung is making his way up there, but he should just about lose out on the camp, I think. But Shanks is Everyone marking. from W is actually going around where JJ yeah. is. We get the 2v2 going back on to the bottom side, but JJ was forced out of the jungle, was able to steal away a little bit, I do believe, but Hung responded in kind topside. Yeah, Hung did. So, Mako, dredge Ooh, line. Lollipop. Oh, so a little bit awkward there. Um, because of the angle that Mako found that hook on, the terrain stopped him from going forward. Yep. It, w it was really strange, but that's just how the you know the, the whole drag system works. Twice that the lollipop has not worked for Mako, or like has worked in his his detriment, detriment which actually I don't yeah. feel like I ever see. <laughs> oh Ooh. no, definitely spoiled him. But it's a battle for the skull crab, and it's first move from Cube. But Arla's a level up, and his ultimate a little bit more impactful in a skirmish like um, this and maybe looking for level six here but still halfway from it just wanted to try to push this wave and get that priority for q yeah we'll just give him a good base as well Can i was gonna I say all on wants this one yeah, slicey he's... maelstrom that's the signal for the go button and jj flashes into the counter strike there that's a bit unfortunate as all can't follow it up the damage does not stick huh very very curious from both sides there uh JJ We're warming up into the counter strike. He was, yeah, we are warming up early. He was looking to just try and execute Hung, but couldn't quite get in range. So, definitely understand that one. Arla really feeling himself in that 2v1. Knew he had JJ in his back pocket and forces back. Cube and Hung, and that's another play picked up. And I, I've just looked at the scoreboard. Cube has 25 CS. Yeah, it's that, not great, man. It's already oh like 12, 1300 gold lead just in that top side. And this is coming from a man, Arla who was literally making things happen for LNG and playoffs in their big run in 2021 as well. And, and even in, in 2020, at the end of 2021, trying to make those miracle runs happen yet again. But this is a guy that came to EDG that I was so excited for because he oh. brings that unique play style. And uh, we see actually Fofo bringing his own unique play style with a solo uh, little catch out there with a bit of help from Mako, gets the kill. And that's a response from EDG on the map. Yeah, really solid for me DG to find that pick. Just pull Iwandi in rotation. He wasn't able to get back over the wall, so we'll just find himself in the death chamber. That ah, is what happens ah. when you fail to get that ward into that bush over that wall. Unfortunately, it looks worse than it is. It, it can be a hard ward to get, but it's not as hard as that one where you stand in the river and get it in the tri brush. That one's really, really solid. Oh, uh, Cube. Cube, you just stepped up to your doom. I don't think Grandmaster is going to save you today. 
Nope. He has I need to have a conversation with him after that one. He's done. Goodbye, Q. This is this is rough. That top side matchup. That is more than double the CS in the hands of Arla. And now, at the very least, in response, Uzi will get picked out on here. Has flash and cleanse? Has cleanse? Oh. Did his flash just come up? I think it was just kind of a cooldown, maybe. Either way, I think he, he was dead. I think he also cleansed a little late. But it doesn't <laughs> matter. It's the full aggression for WE. Everybody's still just getting the mechanics under them here in game one. But it is WE who know where to punish, who needed something to punish, and looked bot lane. Yeah, they do find it. And, you know, if we're talking about the expectations we were setting up in terms of, you know, how we wanted WE to play, this is technically right, you know. Uzi getting yeah, you know honestly. a lot of pressure put down onto him, and uh, a lot of it is coming from uh, Hung and Shanks as a bit of a duo, uh, and just ensuring that they have a little bit of coverage through the mid lane. Uh, however, EDG are monstrously winning out the top side of the map, and if they start to reclaim uh, areas of the map on the bottom side, just because you know we have such yeah. a strong Kha'Zix now, one item, and Mako is just consistently roaming around the map, uh, pairing up with JJ uh like we kind of mentioned they used to so much in spring things could start to kind of snowball a little bit out of hand if this vision starts yeah. to be fully taking control of IEG. And that's the thing, This comp, that's what they wanted. They wanted to snowball you out. They're pushing on first item spikes. They're trying to continue to use this lead for Fofo with the static shiv and the strength that the LeBlanc has represented to find at least a little bit of home on this bottom side as well. Give Uzi some pressure relief and actually get some plates down here as well. Yeah, a couple of plates. I think the minions will just about finish off that one. Extra bit of gold, so Uzi probably doesn't even feel that bad. Like, he's died twice, but Hope hasn't picked up either of those kills, and it's only one yeah. plate on the opposite end, so they are realistically and just he's looking at his top side like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, so he doesn't really care, and for me, I feel like EDG should just feel really comfortable. We said that they wanted to get to, you know, level six mark pretty undisturbed. They've gotten there, and not only that, they're well past it uh, at a point where now, as the second dragon spawns up. If Arla gets teleport up in time, though I feel like W won't give him the window, this could have also been a pretty detrimental skirmish for WE. So fortunately, they will pick up the second dragon of the game and it will be stacked up for them. So this could be yeah. a point of pressure that EDG do have to deal with. But in terms of the goal, it does feel really, really mm -hmm. strong for WE. And oh God, there's a chemtech soul. So I, just, don't I don't worry know. about it. I, I, don't. I, will, I will just say it's actually really nice to see WE uptick in objective control because they are not a team that necessarily has the best objective control on the map. EDG are actually the ones that are like over 50% on all of the objectives, plus first turret, plus, plus first blood. So it's actually really nice to see WE trying to play preemptively in that avenue, but they have not found an answer to this top side. And JJ, he came knocking once before. He tries huh. to come knocking again. Maybe third time's the charm now that the flash from Cube is down. But this turret is all worse for wear here in EDG. We're trying to get first brick. Yeah, they are looking for first brick. Quite strange way for JJ to have approached that, but at the end of the day, he is gaining all up. gold over him. Oh, yep. oh boy. <laughs> it's not getting better. I don't even know what to say. Look at Cube's face. Like, that's me right now. <laughs> He's just sitting there like, mm. This is like the equivalent of playing a tank into Darius and just getting no help and just being capped at the same time. Except he's playing Jax, a carry, who wants the golden resources. And he's against the cannon. So I... Yeah, this is this is tough. I love that the observers are just holding the gold. Holding the gold, <laughs> yeah. Like, How far can he get ahead of him? <laughs> Allah has see. two thousand gold in his back pocket, and he has those items in his inventory. So he's gonna go back to base with like yeah. belt and very very close to a needlessly larger rod on top of that. I think he's probably gonna end up mm -hmm. with like another blasting one or something like that. But either way, he is huge right now. It's the belt. I'm just glad we're not seeing Static Shiv. I'm not gonna lie. I just, mm, true. I true, just don't true. like it on Kennen. It's 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 a bit of a bait, man. I, you know, Ashin was kind of hating on it earlier, and I do I do agree. I think that I am has got a little bit more hype than it deserves, but there are definitely some very very core strong users uh, of that item. And one of them is LeBlanc. <laughs> and one of them is definitely uh, LeBlanc. Yo, Fofo yeah. is right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've right. seen just how much pressure EDG have put down. I also love, you know, I was talking about WE doing stuff to get a lot of that kind of neutral objective control, map control, things like that. EDG still get first turret in this game, and they are at that 69%, I believe, just about uh, in first turret. So 
They know where to go to get gold, and it's those early turrets with all those juicy plates. And they had gotten a bunch of them across the map, specifically for Ala. And now, unlocked is EDG's composition. Yep, absolutely. All they need now is JJ to hit level 11, and second evolution will make him even more slippery. Cube, maybe a little bit of poke damage. Autoing Cube cleared the wave for Fofo. Feels good, man. That's a lot, lot, lot of skill expression inside of this build. <laughs> Are you mad? I, I, no, you not angry. really. It, it, is, it is a silly bit. Hey, hey talk hold, about on. It. hold on. Hold on. Hold <laughs> on. When I came back and we were casting together in our first cast and we saw LeBlanc Shiv, you were the one that were exceptionally it's angry. I, it I'm broken. accepting the world that we live in. I, okay. I have okay. uh, accepted our overlords into the static uh -huh, Shiv uh -huh, until we go uh -huh. to another patch. Uh -huh, like, this okay. item is ridiculous, the amount Ooh. of pressure that it gives you. It's just insane. And that's what the draft, I was like, maybe they have an answer to it, but so far, they don't. Fofo is just going to be insane every single time the depth charge comes through on the shanks. EDG are hungry here. They want to try to chase down WE, but luckily, they have a bit of a defensive turret to go back to, even though it's not going to be lasting for long. But they will pick it up. So even though EDG don't find the kills they were looking for, they still get the objective, and I guess that's the most important thing in the League of Legends at the end of the day. Killing structures. JJ's even going to pick up the mid lane tier one, so this feels not too bad at all. Dude, he could probably actually force this to a turrets. second charge, almost, unless Hung comes alongside to, to clear this one out. If he really wants, but he will just let it go and fade. So two towers for this teleport. Cube, I guess, gets to shove in this wave, but it's not like he's going to hit the tower and pick up plates, which by the, this is the first time the tower's going to take damage. That's why the observers are hovering over it. Let's go, minions! Let's go, minions! Woo! Let's go! Q's okay. sitting there cheering like their biggest fan right now. God, you got like one fifth of the damage done. Good job. Look at that. Now, one thing uh, I'd like to highlight is sorry to cut you, but Uzi's actually mm -hmm. not going towards that like AP build that we've yeah, like, no, kind of like it. He's actually going more towards. They already the have the it, it one. Just, yeah, it makes so much sense. One, they already have, yeah, well, for one, you know, maybe they need to make Static Shiv like a mythic across a team where only one player on the team can pick it up. But obviously, <laughs> I, I don't even think that would save you. <laughs> jo that. Jokes aside, you know. obviously, uh, they do have a lot of AP already baked into the team. Kaisa herself does, you know, like 20%, maybe 15% magic when she's going physical. So, uh, yeah, having Kennen as well just means that she doesn't want to overstack and give WE very easy ionization, so I can respect that. And uh, AD Kaiser is still no slouch, still deals a whole buttload of damage. Yeah. Uh, so be it's actually crazy. No, G no, no, no. JJ failed his hop over the wall. We're not going to go over that. We did Don't see it, JJ. No, we've no, seen no, this we game, game no, where every, everybody's warming it. up. We've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of stuff in this game that you could say <laughs> was not great. All right, there's a lot uh -huh. of stuff that's happened in this game. It's like, okay, your hands are warming up. Uh, good job. Uh, but we are two to two, 17 minutes. You think that's not bad. This is a pretty even game. We're going pretty, pretty evenly. We're going to be getting to late game here. No, it's like a 6,000 gold lead for EDG. Yeah, I do wonder, like, because a lot of this gold is sat in the top of the jungle. Uh, do WE, like, how much do WE feel this gold lead? right now because but it's starting to get everywhere <laughs> it's that it started there but it's starting yeah. to go everywhere around the map yeah that is also the obvious point right it's it's gonna slowly start to bleed and that could certainly start to arise an issue as all i guess was just baiting cube to potentially go in it's not going to be collapsed on and not only that he has Arla, be Arla behind them as well so just very happy to step up because he knows that his jungler will very easily assassinate just about any target that was an auto a cube Iwandi is going to be forced back. Mako's also in the area. So W again, just losing control of any part of the map they try and take. Didn't really talk much about it, but they did lose the third dragon and that went over to EDG. So now there's not even a threat of Sol and side lane. That control is going to be in EDG's favor if it wasn't yeah. already through Arla. LeBlanc is going to have priority over Shanks. So this is EDG's playground as far as WE are concerned. And like W are just going to have to try and hold on to their lunch money where they can until Hope God. comes online, until that second item as well for Shanks is there. Because right now it's EDG of all of the agency that they can pretty much use wherever they want. Two items for ZZ, haven't even gotten a first one. I guess he had boots completed for Hung, uh, but still sitting on components. I do like that Shanks has two items now. I'm trying to build up to that Miramana, but also it went the Dusk Blade this time. Cube just needs to be careful in the side lane. He has his Divine Sunder, but this is where EDG have smelt the wound of WE. Like sharks. 
pretty much circling the bait and they're not gonna actually pounce on anything because cube does give the space over but at the end of the day they still lose the tier two and it's tier two that's worth 600 gold split between both the solo laners oh, who are God, already very, very powerful shakes uh, run run away no shakes oh he got the turret he got the bounty he's calling into the radio like guys i'm not making it back but i hope you enjoy the gold i got you hope you guys enjoy the extra hundred gold in your wallets i died for this as a yeah this i don't want to say the game's over but for now the game is in such e it's just so edg controlled that for we they kind of have to hope that somebody makes a mistake and they have to prey on it very yeah. quickly they they've got a couple of good tools for it but again yeah. the fact that all two items i don't want to predict the game here but i feel like we yeah. are gonna like find a pick they're gonna be all stacked up and then all just gonna find like a four mana and murder them all. and then the game's gonna feel extra over i i uh see especially with this night harvester picked up from fofo it's gonna be even scarier but bam when we're coming into this we're talking about fireworks right we're looking at 2v2s what do the hands checks look like in the matchups things like that this is the quietest fireworks show i've ever seen it's like you're trying like a mime fireworks show where everything's just quiet and you're just watching the explosions because yes they're winning yes it's nice but we're still five kills total in 21 minutes. Maybe that's about to change here as Mako and the rest of EDG find a nice little engage onto the side pickoff here. Dia Dia and Uzi in some trouble. Shanks gets caught though. And now it's Iwandi who goes in for the big engage. WE are just pulling all or nothing right now. But a slicing I maelstrom from Ala gets shut down as well. As you now have a nice little move from the reset from Hope. But if Fofo shuts him out as well. And he with this little two item spike, two and a half has been able to pick apart a couple more members. It's a good fight from WE though. It's a decent fight for WE, three for three in these circumstances feels re oh, oh, he tried to kill tried him to with get the, the bounce. <laughs> he tried to kill him with the ship, that was really smart. I was actually so close to being correct. Like if Arna's alive for an extra second, man, I think he just kills everyone. We'll get a look at it though, because it starts off with, you know, just a, an attempted pick on both sides actually, to be honest with you. Uh, not only onto Shanks, onto JJ, also the Lekka is going to be onto Arla for a second. Arla though, after they kill Shanks, it's like they all funnel into this choke. And the only reason why they don't die sooner, I feel like, is because the flash out from Arla. Yeah, I think he gets oh, is it rooted by Maokai instantly, so he can't move and stay on top of Hope. So, very, very close to killing him. But what it means is Hope stays alive for much longer than he deserves to. Gets out yeah. all of these extra rockets and actually able to claw a little bit more back for WE than perhaps given the circumstances they should have edg however yeah. once we return back to the map pick up the dragon so that now two to two and we'll likely just look to reclaim more territory back on the top side of the map around the barrel and i'm honestly proud of cube cube actually had a, a big influence in that fight where he has been down and out for a lot of the majority of the game so the jacks actually able to do something with the divine sun you're gonna be looking at the second item but you look across the other side we are getting very close to three item spikes and edg do not want to let up they have a snowball comp and that snowball is already formed I have to call them Nunu. JJ. It's going to be forced to use his element. Oh, the end of the world. little poke Ooh, on the back that. end there. The, the nature's grasp does end up connecting on the Mako, but the dredge line got him out. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, they still get away with what they wanted, right? In this exchange. EDG, so. <laughs> <laughs> the dodging it. He was just taking a pie to the face there. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. I mean, man. Why is it there a pie skin for Jace? Oh my gosh. A pie? Skin, I don't know. That... Bro pies? No, that's that's not. See, I was gonna say the whole like bakery pantheon thing, but they already did that. Mm. Yeah, they already did that. Very, yeah. very funny. That might be my favorite pantheon skin. <laughs> it's very good. It's a very good one. Although, he throws, uh, he throws you know, butter knives as a spear. Miss him one, two, three pantheon in the meta. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny. I know this has no bearing on the LPL. And in ACL, we have a guy that plays pantheon, and so I, I get to cast him sometimes. It's kind of Dude, fun. I but anyways, uh, back into okay. this one specifically. No I, I won't add we got anything. The, uh, <laughs> look, look at EDG though, man. They're they're moving forward. All right, and I think that uh, now that this pick comp has found a lot of confidence on the map. I want to see them continue that because I do, I do still feel like entrance into objectives is going to be something that can be difficult. I'm not saying it's going to be difficult, but can be difficult given the WE composition as well. Yeah, it certainly can be. 
I feel like the big thing for me is that WD's composition really wanted to be ahead through mid jungle, right? So you can take control. A vision here is cube actually oh, might this win. This is the ultimate comeback. Oh no, nope, oh, not anymore. Oh, never mind. Oh my <laughs> That's not God. happening. And he is completely surrounded. Ooh, gets out. He has the hole breaker as well that had gotten completed. He makes it out alive. They don't want to chase him because he's just slippery. And W on the other side don't get punished either. Yeah, you know, here was me thinking, Cube might win now that he has Hullbreaker. I didn't see that Arla had finished his Void Staff, so <laughs> he absolutely still does not win. He is looking to try and win out on the side lane. Hope will be able to just step away from Fofo's attempted poke. And yeah, I feel like, again, more control around the top side afforded to EDG. If they want to start Baron sooner rather than later, W will have to check into it, right? There is no getting around that. Just depends on how quickly they actually get the setup as secure as they want it to be as for now the pace of the game has definitely slowed down and i feel like that is by design of edg but of course the longer that you let we scale up the more powerful these champions innately become and it does of course mean that mistakes become more punishing too right if you slip up now you know at 25 minutes you might be able to recover you slip up at 35 or even a little bit earlier than that all of a sudden you know you're you're down so long that people on we from a fight that you lost can respawn and get the baron so i would like to see edg put the foot on the gas a little bit but for now, they are still very much in firm control of this game. Yeah, they absolutely are. And again, getting really close to those three outer spikes. We got to see they will collapse in bottom side on the cube. They're going to try to knock once again at the door. But now he has that hole breaker. Might be sitting inside the door with the shotgun. As uh, we'll see if he can actually get this going. He will take that attack onto Ala though. And immediately realizes the mistake that he might have made. As he gets the TP in this time around and takes the 2v1. He gets the solo onto Ala. And from the bottom, now we're here, WE. Ala did not have his ultimate up during that exchange. I think it was just coming off cooldown, so he wasn't able to use it. Huh? Oh, long journey home. Fofo gets caught here. The double CC and Hope will be able to respond here. Fofo Ooh. ends up making it out even with all the damage down. Shanks can't find that extra engage, but this is barren for WE. And they're picking up steam. Yes, they are. JJ is here. And he will be spotted out on this ward, but will he be able to get inside the pit? He's got flash. He's got ult coming up in a few seconds. Cube's just but going Cube in. is on the Cube other side. Right now, he's trying to make up for those early sins. It's Baron for WE, and they even find the fight after. Mako's down. EDG have no response. And WE, they are clawing back this giant lead. There's actually a TP from Ala down here trying to commit onto this one. Baby's all by himself. He's all by himself. Oh. Is he going to go it? No. Oh. Opens up. They are just throwing themselves. But Uzi, he steps up to the plate and then immediately dies. <laughs> I love the call. It felt like Uzi was maybe going to make that one a bit of a miracle turnaround. But Cube comes in and <laughs> mops that one up. But WE, this is what I was talking about. For EDG, you can't afford to like let these champions get items because you can see silly things like this start to come through, man. And now third dragon for WE looks like a real possibility. JJ is down here, I guess. Maybe he can steal it, but how worth is it really to go in for this, right? It's it's one Chemtech dragon that you can probably afford to let go. Maybe if the poke starts to come through feasibly, gets but engaged. On. engaged. Oof. It's very, very close. Flashes have been burned, though. Dragon's still there. JJ may be trying to slink around the side, but they immediately pull off after that initial damage goes through. Yeah. WE able to get their third dragon in the game and soul point. Goodness me. I'm, I'm just a bit taken aback by the, the entire sequence of plays that happened all the way from down here, too. So let's get a look at how this ended up unfolding. So ultimate from uh Arla still on cooldown right so this is why there's not as much burst damage readily available and this is why i kind of like whispered the last time that we saw this exchange happen that q could maybe one like 1v1 Arla, but you know we saw how the first time went this time around of course with the help of uh having a teleport also come down to just add a little bit of moral victory to the map cube does win out without Arla having r so we now have that win condition to work with as well side lane slowly becoming yeah. something they can play through Three items across the table, though, here for EDG. They've really got to put the pedal to the metal. Find those big catch outs. Get something against WE. And you can see they're hungry. They're forcing it. That last little exchange, they just forced themselves at WE. And it did not come up their way. We don't have any objectives on the map for a long while. You still have the Baron buff for WE. So you see EDG are just fiending right now. 
they are they they need to accelerate the game somehow definitely be through this mid lane because the tower was chunked out a while ago they can get this inhibitor then they can start to work on the side lanes and actually try and curb the pressure of cube a little bit more as uh, so baron's also dropping off from we in 20 seconds not that they really had much a siege but they definitely clawed some gold back which feels good at the very least cube however claws back some gold uh, injection in trade right now with this bottom side tier two and that should be his wits end finished up as well which he's angling towards to just again push him a little bit further ahead in terms of his capabilities in a 2v1 specifically at dealing with Arla so WE you know you rewind the clock 10 minutes ago this game feels over but now that they've had that chance at picking up the Baron and Cube has now fully come online on this side lane it's become a very tricky affair for EDG to actually close this out I found out what happened. Somebody unplugged the sound system to the fireworks display. That's what happened. See, now we're getting all the fireworks and all the sound with it, okay? It just, mm -hmm. you know, technical difficulties. Uh, no, it really is WE coming back into this one and giving EDG a run for the money, right? They were like seven, 8,000 gold in the advantage earlier, and slowly but surely, WE have carved that back to almost 3,000 here. Yeah, I've got to say... I mean, I know we're, we're waxing lyrical about Q right now, but I think it's more in the context of this guy was down like 2,000 gold, 3,000 gold individually, had his tower taken whilst the plates are still on. He had like, he was, he was down like 60 CS or something ridiculous, and now he's just in this position of power where he genuinely holds a lot of sway in terms of pressure here for EDG, and you can see a lot of vision and, uh, you know, people resources being thrown down there. Uh, just briefly on a hover, because they know, you know, they don't want to give Cube any real breathing room anymore. Just because of how much a threat this guy actually poses to the side lane yeah. in the immediate future. You see that third item now coming online for a lot of members of WE as well. So they are right in the tussle for EDG. And this where the execution bar of EDG for themselves has actually risen through the roof. And they've got to try to find as many picks as possible because their health bars will not hang with the kind of style that the composition of WE represent. It will come to start to become a bit of a tricky angle for EDG to find, right? We often used to see, like, for me, Rel, obviously, her engage is one that's particularly powerful, right? But I, I do feel like her counter engage and her ability to shut down mobility is also something that is very, very scary. I think with the older kit, it definitely uh, felt a little bit stronger because the E as well, right? That chain, long chain E stun used to be particularly powerful. But now that it's loaded into the Q, you can still do the exact same thing on a much easier to hit skill shot so even if the edg like find an angle and try and you know dog pile into a target if i want these there and doesn't get one shot immediately he can slow down a lot of the approaching divers now trying to find yeah. the carries of Ooh, as well. this is huge all right we got 50 seconds for a dragon this is soul for we so something edg have to be there to fight for you just got zanyas Fourth item completed for Allah. You actually have a nice team fight coming up here. But Cube, maybe going oh, no. for a preemptive oh, no. strike, has found Uzi, but he goes invisible. Cube can't chase him down. WE, they are swarming onto EDG, and Hung finds Mako. Oh, goodness me. WE might just get soul off the back of that as well. I mean, Dragon spawns, or Baron rather spawns in 10 seconds. They can even go to that if they really don't care about this. But soul always going to be slightly more highly rated than a Baron. It's the permanent buff after all. Even if it's a Chemtech Salt, that's going to feel quite good, right? I mean, hey, this is a game where being bursted down below 50% HP against Poke and against All In from a They're cannon, forcing it. Pretty reasonable. And yeah, so EDG are trying to make uh, WE kind of think about their next couple of moves because they're all on the top side alongside this Baron, considering the startup. So WE have to just play this mid lane way for now and actually wait to see what EDG are angling for. But they can't check into this fog. Ala and JJ waiting in the darkness. Very, very scary. Now W will look to try and send at the very least Q back over to that dragon, get that one started up and see if they can buy enough time for it to be secured whilst they just hold hands of EDG and ensure that they're not actually on the Baron. Mako has made it back out of the map. That's actually pretty big for a lot of the engage. Fofo try to find hope here as well. The dragon oh is going down. EDG are struggling to find something back, but now they realize they need to find something. They've got to get something as that Chemtech soul takes the rift in WE's favor. It is back onto the Baron dance, EDG go. Yeah, they have to look for it. Hope's gone to the Wolf Camp just to try and vamp up a little bit of HP. He will make his way this back. Is the over. ultimate power spike for WE though, it feels like. EDG are desperate. Oh, they got oh, Mako oh. on the bank. They are nowhere near that timing on the Nature's Grasp. But Allah, he wants to make it happen one by one. Are the dominoes going to fall? Uzi, he's in the back line. He's got the killer instinct, but he's locked down. And WE, they might have just done it. Cube is so big. Shanks is so big. And 
that's two kills for Fofo. He's dodging. He's weaving straight into his grave. Too many hands to dodge from the side of Fofo. WE, they get just about everything they need in this exchange. They do lose three, and the Baron's still up on the map. But it's EDG who are looking for that fight. So to not actually lose any crucial members, or most importantly, the Baron in this situation, is perfect. Cube is still on the map. He's going to take off this last tier two on the side of EDG, actually, no, they've got that tier two in the top side. Doesn't really matter. Either way, this is just Mako going in and looking for hope. You understand it, but it's just a little bit too far. Arlo as well, I think, was pathing around and then he recognized how quickly that engage was. So he had to take a bit more of an awkward path. Still finds a good ultimate and Uzi as well. Backline has to go Zonya's early because he knows that Cube is going to pull the trigger on the Counter-Strike. He cannot afford to actually finish off. Uh, the big tree, but fortunately JJ was in the back line to do just that, and Fofo does his best to break some ankles, but unfortunately gets his leg snapped instead. You yeah, find a little bit of a uh, medical action going on for EDG. They are struggling here as the lead has now crested over to WE's side for the first time in this game, 35 minutes in. And if that's a comeback, oh my goodness, what a way to do it. They are looking on the precipice here, and it feels like all momentum and all confidence has seeded over to Team WE. Almost entirely. WE just need to get this Baron. And once they get it, they will feel really, really good. The only issue is, you know, you're putting yourself in the pit against Kennen, who is so, so powerful. Is actually going to cap off at Morello, though. He isn't going to go towards Death Cap here. Wants the anti heal or just wants the more immediate power spike, potentially. So we'll see where or how dangerous Arla can be and where he'll approach from. But Cube is such a menace on the front line. He's also got the Zonyas yeah. now, so he can dive even more aggressively into the back line if needs be. The GAs be. too for yeah. WE. They actually have two, one for Shanks, one for Hope. Uh, you did get one for Uzi as well. So everyone knowing these fights are gonna be important. Momentum is key and Mako, you can't get caught again. You got Fofo on the flank though. They're trying to separate it. Mako's still pretty tanky. Allah trying to look for his engage, finds it. As Fofo goes to the back line, this is the fight they needed. They're picking him apart with WE. They turn so fast like a striking Viper right on the EDG. It's too much for EDG to handle Uzi. I think ended up in the mixer a little bit too quickly. And now WE should be able to close out this game from what was almost a 10,000 gold deficit. Holy cow, man. Fofo just trying to make it happen, but they are barreling straight to the Nexus. Team WE, we had doubts. We were asking for them to find traction and they found traction in game number one, but it came after 30 minutes and they are running straight to the Nexus of EDG. Game one, a woeful battle from EDG, but it's WE who end up bringing them to the table. Team WE with one of the most funny comebacks I think I've seen in a little while. And I have to say, whilst we can obviously sit here and credit WE, this had to have been a game that EDG closed out. There were almost 10,000 yeah, gold absolutely. up with so much ability to just stranglehold WE out, but they get a little bit